Hello there, it's just turned 2 p.m. here in the Russian capital and you're watching RT International with me, Nikki Aaron. Now we start with breaking news from the U.S. state of Texas. Two explosions have rocked a chemical plant near the city of Houston. The incident has been confirmed by the plant's owner, French chemicals group Arkema. One law enforcement official was taken to hospital after inhaling fumes from the plant, while nine others are being checked at the hospital. The smoke which they inhaled is believed to be a non-toxic irritant. The company is warning there are risks of further blasts. Major flooding from Hurricane Harvey had knocked out the plant's primary and backup power, which provided cooling to the chemical materials on site. They added they had no means to prevent the blasts. Hundreds living within one and a half miles of the plant in the town of Crosby had been evacuated. The state of Texas is still being hit by hurricane-turned-tropical storm Harvey. It's already affected tens of thousands of people. The city of Houston has been among the worst area hit, and floodwaters continue rising. Well, we discussed the consequences of the explosions with Christina Consolo, the founder of Nuked Radio. Here's what she told us. The plant itself has been surrounded by floodwaters and is only accessible by boat. And they had only a very uh, small skeleton crew of 11 people that had remained in the plant um, to, uh, to try to mitigate for anything that they could do. Uh, but uh, they were anticipating an explosion would occur essentially because the chemicals became volatile when the refrigeration failed. And the refrigeration failed because the flooding had knocked out power. And I understand that these two and, and the fire and smoke that was seen after was actually smaller than what they had anticipated to occur. The plant had warned uh, that it could be quite a large explosion on par with the, uh, the fertilizer plant explosion that had occurred in West Texas several years ago. But uh, they, there was, it, they were really powerless to stop it because of the horrendous conditions there so whether or not they'll do a shelter-in-place order for people or extend the evacuation lines further, um, they're not going to do any of that until daybreak because it's just too dangerous to move people around in these flooded conditions. Let's find out more about the situation. I'm now joined by environmentalist writer Tony Juniper. Mr. Juniper, thank you for joining us on RT International. Now, given the situation, should people be concerned? And if so, what precautions should they be taking? Well, there's evidently toxic pollution being released to the atmosphere, and so people should be concerned not to breathe or expose themselves to that if they possibly can. I'm not sure the company has released a comprehensive breakdown of exactly what's getting into the atmosphere and what the chemicals are following combustion that are being potentially breathed by people. Uh, but if I lived there, I'd be shutting my window and I'd be trying to avoid breathing anything that's coming uh, from, from the combustion taking place there. Uh, but hopefully the, the company can release some more information and give people more uh, advice about how, how to protect themselves if they possibly can. The latest we know is that the explosions had burned um, organic peroxides. How dangerous is that? Well, it's not going to be great for you. It depends how much you breathe in. But these kinds of, of toxic releases obviously are going to cause health impacts depending on how much people breathe in. And so the more that people can avoid it, the better. It will depend on the wind direction, obviously, in terms of how much of this stuff blows towards uh, populated areas. But if people keep their windows and doors shut and try to avoid breathing this, and bearing in mind that people have been made homeless, which might make it more difficult for them to do that, then uh, that would be a sensible thing to do. Uh, given you're an expert in this field, how much of a concern do these explosions present? I guess the flooding on this scale is almost impossible to protect against. Well, I think what we're getting here is a reminder of the kinds of challenges we will face as we go forward into a world with an ever more volatile climate. And it's not possible yet to attribute this kind of event to the impacts of human-induced uh, uh, effects on the, on the climate system. But we do know that there is on average going to be, and it indeed already is, and it's reflected in temperature records and this kind of extreme flooding and drought event, there will be more of this as a result of the atmosphere warming up. 
And so we do get a little taste in, in this situation as to how inadequate some of our existing precautions are in terms of how we design infrastructure, in terms of how we design safety uh, features to work alongside uh, the uh, potential hazards that come with plants like this and there was a backup power system but it got flooded and so the backup power went the refrigeration went down and then this kind of uh, consequences has unfolded and as we look to the future and we see the potential for more flooding and more extreme conditions then we need to design our infrastructure and safety systems accordingly and it is terrifying to note that Donald Trump President Donald Trump just a few weeks ago reversed exactly that kind of requirement uh, in terms of looking at the resilience of, of infrastructure going forward uh, that was put in place by President Obama's administration that did recognize climate change to be a problem and understood the science. President Trump is a denier of climate change science and he's putting citizens of his country at risk by not putting in place the kinds of precautions we will need in the future to avoid this kind of thing happening if we possibly can. Well, so far we're hearing that only one person, a policeman, needed hospital treatment for inhaling the fumes. So I guess they did avoid, you know, what could have been a, a disaster on a larger scale. However, um, tell us if you think uh, one and a half miles uh, from the plants where people have been evacuated, is this enough of an area to be evacuated or should it be further? I'm not on the ground there, so I, I, I can't really comment in terms of whether that, that's a, a, a good distance or not. It will depend on the wind direction, it will depend on the chemicals coming out of, of the fire, and it will depend on whether they're expecting any further explosions involving possibly other chemicals. So I don't feel qualified to, to comment on that, but I do hope that people locally are able to, to avoid the worst effects of this, because toxic pollution getting into the air and being breathed is not good for anybody, and it's terrible that, that the people are, are suffering in this way, but hopefully the worst of it can be avoided. Mm. There's also a big question over how quickly uh, Houston and the region will be able to recover from this tragedy. People are saying the disaster is much worse than that caused by Hurricane Katrina more than a decade ago. What would you say? Well, I think it will take some time to understand the, 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 the scale of this. Hurricane Katrina was a, a total disaster, and that, of course, was also linked not only to climate change, but also wider environmental degradation and from what I've understood so far from commentators in the United States is that that is a feature of this particular disaster that's still unfolding insofar as areas of natural grassland and coastal wetland have been built upon in ways that have reduced their ability to absorb flood water and so what we've done is to cause uh, a, a multiplication of environmental problems uh, assuming that there is a component of human induced climate change in here we see again a lesson for the future in terms of how we can avoid the worst of some of this by planning carefully and not having too much concrete uh, in areas where previously there was natural drainage going on. If you start replacing wetlands and woodlands and grasslands with, with concrete and freeways and with rooftops, then you compound flooding. And that does appear to have been uh, one of the factors that's contributed to, to the impact of the floods here. And so again, one would hope that you know, we don't just wait for the next disaster, uh, but we do actually start to learn some lessons, not only for Houston, but for the entire world, in terms of how we are going to need to plan differently, in terms of how we design cities, how we design infrastructure, how we design safety systems, to cope with weather events that are unprecedented. Mm. I mean, this, this is off the scale. It's not something we've experienced before. And as we move to ever greater levels of global warming, hopefully we can avoid the worst of this by cutting pollution, but we will now have to cope with some of it. As we go forward, we will experience more and more previously unexperienced events, and we need to plan for those. And okay. simply sticking your head in the sand, as Donald Trump has done, is really not doing anybody any favours at all. In fact, all it's doing is storing up problems for the future, potentially very big ones. Okay, Mr. Tony Jupiter, environmentalist writer, thank you for speaking to us and sharing your expertise.